Ballard, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing today? So good. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you. You're the subject of a brand new movie, A Sound of Freedom. But before we get into that, I want to ask you, how did you get into the kind of work that you do, which is rescuing children from sex trafficking? That's heavy and hard work. What, what? Super heavy. I, I didn't intend to. I, I went to school and grad school with the intention of working in federal law enforcement yeah. to fight terrorism and weapons. And I graduated grad school in, in December 2001. So it was like, that's it. Terrorism is everywhere. And that's what we're going to be doing. I got to my first uh, station as a special agent in California on the border. And six months into that, they created a child crimes unit. And they asked me to be part of it. And, and the reason I was asked, that my, according to my boss, he says, I know you're a person of faith and you need that to do this. And I had no idea what that meant really until I was actually in it, because it is the darkest thing. You, 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 a, a decent mind couldn't even imagine yeah. what this is. Yeah. The things people do to children, and I'm talking about even adolescent children, that's bad enough. I'm talking about like seven, six, five. And once you see it, you can't unsee it, and then you gotta make a decision, right? Yeah. And I, my decision was just all in. So I've been doing that ever since. I mean, how do you prepare to, to go into that kind of work? Because you, you did, you mentioned how daunting it is to see what these younger and younger and younger generations of children are facing. How do you deal with that spiritually, right? Because there's, it's got to take a toll on you psychologically. Huge, huge psychological toll. Uh, super dark. I, I, I say, you know, it burns holes in your brain. Like, mm. you know, I've probably had to watch thousands of hours and this is when i was an agent i don't yeah. do that anymore because i don't have a badge which is one of the benefits um but thousands of hours of watching children being raped and then and then rewinding and watching again to describe it for the court or for the you know for the for the prosecutors it's you know and then and then seeing the kid and you had you're now you're with the kid and you're like oh my gosh and you know i had an experience once with um with a child it's actually depicted in the sound of freedom so it's a real scene where the child, I was seeing this child um, who I had already seen the videos of him being raped by the pedophile who's driving the van. Mm -hmm. And he gets stopped at the border and they get him out. And, I, and I, I'm one of the first on the scenes. And, and at one point, he's five years old and he's being kidnapped from Mexico. And the guy who's kidnapping him is, has, a, has a basically child porn studio in, in San Bernardino, California. Yeah. And... Um, Anyway, so I, I get this, he jumps into my arms. In fact, that's the scene you see here at NRB. Mm, yeah. Um, Jim yeah. Caviezel holding, that's the, that's the actual scene from the movie where he jumps out of the van and I'm holding him. I'm just like, oh my gosh, holy crap. And then he tells me about his sister and um, his sister's being trafficked. And he gives me this necklace. This is a real story. And, the, and when you get Santa Freedom, there's a, he's, you, even in the trailer, Caviezel's always holding this necklace. The necklace is real. It's, it, I actually told the producers to consider not telling the story because people won't believe it. But the little boy gave me a necklace. It was a necklace that was like a rosary, like a prayer to him. And um, the necklace had my name on it. Wow. Uh, it was because it had a little scripture, 1 Timothy 6.11. And when I saw my name on it, he gave it to me, even though I was trying to give it back to him. It, it, was, a, it, it was like a calling. So from the beginning, to answer your question, how do you deal with this? Like, if you don't feel Jesus, if you don't feel God, if you don't feel the Spirit, you're not going to do this. Yeah. You're not going to, and if you try, you're not going to last. Like, at least I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. last. Um, you know, and so it, everything is faith to me. Everything is knowing what Jesus says about hurting kids, that it's better than a millstone be hung around your neck. And you toss the bottom of the sea. So you, he, he's clear where he stands on it. And when, when you, ha, when you ha, that gives you confidence in the Lord because you know where he stands on it. Right. He's fiercely, I mean, it's, it's mafioso talk. Yeah. Like I, you sink to the bottom of the sea with a millstone around your neck. Like, it's, it's only right because Jesus is saying it in this case mm, and yeah. you know he means it. So, so that's how I, that's the only way I can say I can even deal with it or heal from it is, is through Jesus. I think this is what I think is so important about Sound of Freedom and making this film because it'll get broad exposure, hopefully, right? And people will finally see maybe what actually is happening. I've heard you talk about the, the, the fact that this kind of child sexual slavery and the, this trafficking, there's more people now enslaved than ever before in the history of the world. That's right. Uh, talk about that because I think that's something people don't re realize is actually happening. Right. I mean, we, we look at our history books and we think slavery was eradicated because yeah. we read the books about the Civil War and, and Abraham Lincoln and Will, William Wilberforce in Britain and, 
And that's wonderful, but in some ways it's, it does us a disservice. Mm -hmm. We get a false sense of security that, it's, that it's, it's dead. It's not dead. It's illegal. Yeah. That's great, finally. It took, it, it took 350 years for the United States, for America, even before it was a country, right? It was, it was already, slavery was already here. Um, why it took that long is, is horrific and grotesque. Mm -hmm. But it finally, it finally, you know, um, it finally er eradicated. Um, and I'm not saying that the modern day form of slavery is worse than the transatlantic 19th century uh, slavery. It's not. Um, it's all bad. <laughs> right. But the, the, the point is, and the people need to wake up to is, you could add up all the people who were enslaved over that 350 years of period of time that we call the transatlantic slave trade, and you can add them all up, and there's more people alive right now in slavery mm -hmm. than all of those combined over 350 years. Yeah. It's close to 30 million people, or by most estimates, State Department, UN, that are in slavery, either slave labor, sex slavery, or organ harvesting. And sometimes if it's one, it's going to be the other anyway, eventually, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's horrifying. It's horrific. Um, the United States government and most governments aren't, aren't making it the priority that it should be. I think there's five drug agents to every one, you know, anti-child trafficking wow. agent. Let's, let's switch that because I'd, I'd rather save a child than seize a pound of cocaine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and so we're trying to get loud and, and, you know, we can do operations all day long and we always will. And if, if all we ever did is rescue one kid in 10 years, it will have been worth it, mm. guaranteed. Luckily, we've been able to rescue over 7,000 um, and 5,000 arrests that we've assisted on. But, um, but that's, that's only a drop statistically. Right. It's a drop in the yeah. bucket. And so we need, we need people in media. We need mm. people doing interviews like, like you're doing here with us. Uh, we need Sound of Freedom. We need Jim Caviezel. We need Eduardo Verastegui, Mira yeah. Servino. They're the ones in the end, and the people who attend these media functions, events, screenings, movies, whatever it is, that's what's going to end this. Yeah. We, we, we won't end it. We will just continue rescuing the one. Who's going to end it are the storytellers. Yeah. You know, you say 7,000 plus that have, been, that have been rescued, and that is a drop in the bucket, but it's also a huge testament to the work that you're doing. How have you seen God orchestrating a lot of the success that you've had in, in the work you do? I mean, the, the, the miracles are insane. Mm -hmm. Right, like a quick story, like just last year. I, we have five divisions and regional directors who run all our operations. I do a lot of different things, right, as the founder of the organization, but I have my own ops team. So occasionally one or two a year, maybe I'll do one. And one operation I did was when Russia invaded Ukraine uh, in February of last year, and my wife comes to me, you gotta go to Ukraine. I'm like, ah, there's nothing I can do there. Like, you gotta go. Uh, she, we knew of some orphans that we were trying to help get out. Mm. And she says, go find these kids. And, and so I did. Only because I felt it and my wife felt it. And I was like, let's go. Yeah. Well, what happens after that turns into, it's a four-part miniseries that's coming out. Mel Gibson's in it. Tony Robbins is producing it. Mm. We had no idea what was going to happen. Only one of the episodes is about Ukraine. We get there. We find a pedophile ring out of Holland that's trafficking war victim children. They're, and they're trying to traffic them into Mexico. And we end up on this, it's for, it's over four months only, we, we went from Ukraine to Holland to Mexico to Ecuador to Miami uh, and, and took down a whole pedophile ring. Five, lead, five pedof, uh, leaders of a pedophile group, political party in Holland that were fugitives. Um, it ended in, a, in, a, in a discovering a child sex hotel in, in a little town, a little village in, in, in Ecuador. Wow. That, that these pedophiles were, yeah. were, were going to advertise they were, they were having sex parties with children, right? So that whole thing's a miracle, and, and I mean, I can t every step of the way, God's in it. And but the biggest miracle is after those four months, I go back to my wife, and I see her, and she's busy. We have nine children, and she's doing her thing, and I start crying because I, I was thinking back to how this all started. It's a whirlwind in the middle of it, but then it's like I now see what, 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 what you felt God told you to tell me to go to Ukraine, and there was no really rational reason to go. Yeah. There wasn't any direct like objective that I can't even get my hands around, but she's just like, you got to go because I feel it. And she's crying when she's telling me this in February of 2022. She's because she's knowing that I'm going to a place where bombs are dropping, mm. but she knows God's telling her to tell me. And then I get back four months later and then it hits me because I'm slow. I'm a slow <laughs> thinker apparently. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what was actually happening here is God saw these children in, in suffering in Kanoa, Ecuador this little village and where no one was paying attention. And those, those hundreds of kids were going to turn into thousands of kids. Yeah. And the, these pedophiles were about to launch a campaign, an advertising campaign for the 
for their sex hotel. And God told my wife to tell me to go to Ukraine mm. because he saw children in Ecuador. That's how God works, right? Yeah. And then once we go and show our faith, faith precedes the miracle. You go, even if you don't know exactly beforehand what you're going to do, but you get there. And once, once God sees you're willing to put your boots on the ground in a war zone, mm. then he says, okay, yeah. now I can work with you. And boom, doors start opening. Let me introduce you to the pedophile organization. Let me introduce you to the guy in Mexico who's, who's hiding and hurting kids. It was crazy. And in four months, we ripped through six countries, three continents, mm. hundreds, maybe thousands in the end rescued. That's just God. Wow. There's no other way to explain that. Yeah. Well, it's a story of obedience, right? Of, of being willing to obey in a culture that tells us to just do what we want. Exactly. Uh, and learning to, to, to follow the call of God, I think is, that's a hard thing. How have you learned to sacrifice uh, in order to be obedient? So I learned that lesson very strongly in, when I started OUR because I didn't want to. You know, like you, to your point, like Jesus does not ask you to do easy things. Yeah. Ever. Like if he's asking you to do something, it's because it's going to rip your heart out probably, <laughs> mm. right? And that's what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. And I'm not saying I'm a very good one, but I'm trying. Mm. And, and, I, and I, I learned um, that lesson in December of 2013 when Glenn Beck was starting to raise the money. And that was like, oh, crap, now the money's here. I'm going to have to actually quit my job. And I don't want to because it's safer. It feels safer over here. Mm. But my wife taught me something so important because I was freaking out. And she said, okay, just sit down. I was having a, a, a panic attack. Second week of December, 2013. I was like, I can't do this. I can't leave. I can't go. I can't, you know. And she's like, calm down. She's like, close your eyes. She's like, do you, what do you, look at the two paths that you're looking at. The government path, the safety of the federal government job and versus this new Operation Underground Railroad. I said, well, she said, what do you see? And I said, I see clear and, and bright <laughs> and happy and the government, it's safe, it's secure. And over here I see cobwebs and creepy and like, I don't want to go there. She's like, okay, open your eyes. She's like, okay, close your eyes again. I don't, I don't know where she got this. God must have been telling her what to say because she says, okay, picture you're meeting your maker and you're, we're all, yes, it's coming for all of us. Hmm. You, can't, you can't, the one thing we, we never escape is death, right? Like we're, it's going to happen. We're going yeah. to meet our maker. She's like, no, what's he going to ask you? If he asks you, did you, did, was I clear? First of all, that you need to do this. When he, and he had been, by the way, very hmm. clear. And did you do it? Tim, can you, what are you going to answer? What are you going to say? She's like, now picture those two roads with that in mind. And it was the most amazing visual that God blessed me with through my wife. Wow. It switched. Yes, I could still see the path. 50 years old, I get to retire. I get a pinch. I see all that. But it's scary. Yeah. It's like, uh-oh, what will I miss? What, will, what, will, uh, what blessings might not come to me, my family, and others if, I be, if I'm worried, if I'm fearful? And, and all of a sudden, the other path... The, 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 the nonprofit privatizing the rescue of children, which I don't know how to do. I don't, I've never started a business. And that's what this is. Like, it was, I still couldn't see in, this, in my visual of that path. But it was warm and it was light and Jesus was there. And I could just see two stones in my mind. I saw two stones. Like, just go to the first stone hmm. and then go to the next stone path, you know. And it was warm and happy. And I, I woke up and, and I was like, okay. It, yeah. and, and I try to think of that every day in my life because every decision I make when I get up in the morning, no matter what it is, big or small, if you have that perception, if you put everything, you, every decision you make in the context of a meeting with your maker, that will happen, yeah. right? In 50 to 60, 70, whatever, for all of right. us, it's like this. Then, then your decisions become really clear yeah. of what you should do. Yeah. And, and again, it's, it's not going to ever be the easy, fun recreational thing people think they've tricked themselves into thinking that's why they're here we're not here to recreate we're here to serve people mm. we're here to, to to build a relationship with, with god and, and 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 find salvation and help others yeah that's it i mean what did jesus teach that's all he taught serve 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 mm. i mean the whole new testament that if i could give it one word it's serve people love yeah. people love god love your neighbor right and then in the end it's with the iron the ironic thing which is also scriptural is you actually find happiness there way more than you would recreating. Yeah. You actually find that deep joy, which is, you know, and, and it's hard, but there's joy in this. Yeah, So for sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to go all no. crazy pastor on you, but <laughs> that's just... <laughs> no, I appreciate you sharing your heart too. And I, the last question I want to ask you, you've been generous with your time. I appreciate it. But what is it like to see yourself in a movie with the sound uh, of freedom coming out? It is, it is weird. You know, it's like <laughs> my wife talks about it. Like, she's like, I feel like I'm looking at like... 
this is a weird analogy, but she's like, you know, when you go to a funeral and you look at the, at the, at the body and it's like, that's not even that person because the spirit is somewhere else. It's, that's not that person. She's like, that's what it feels like when she looks at th these characters playing our family. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's not us, you yeah. know? And especially when your favorite actor is playing you because, you know, I chose Jim hmm. when they asked me. Who so I, how did that come about? Well, I never thought they were going to make this movie. They've been talking about it for a couple of years, but I knew th through doing some research I think like less than 5% of movies in concept make it to the big screen. Like it's just freaking yeah. rare. So I'm like, this is never going to be made. First of all, who wants to watch a movie about human trafficking? Like it's dark, it's ugly. Like no one's going to make this. Um, especially back in 2015 when they were, because no one was even talking about it then. Right? Yeah. And they came to me and I hate Hollywood. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, Hollywood is the reason I'm even having to do what I do. Mm. They create the demand and I know they, they're going to hate me and want to cancel me for saying this, but it's true. The sexualization of, 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 the, of the world, of the nation, is what creates, in the end, this desire that gets into weird things like child sex, yeah. you know, tourism and whatnot. So I'm not a fan of Hollywood. You know, the only show I watch is The Chosen. That's the only show I watch on TV, and, which is so cool. That that's, that's who ends up taking the film, is the Angel yeah. Studios. But, um, so when they came to me and asked that question, okay, we're going to do the film. And, and we had turned down other offers, by the way from like that we just were like uh, uh like you are you are hollywood right mm. and so i give someone a chance like maybe you're not hollywood maybe you're in the industry but you're not hollywood right and the big te they, when they said you know who do you want to play you i said there's only one person who can play me it's jim caviezel like okay great actor they said but we're, we're looking for someone that's more your body type looks like you i mean in the end you'll see that they did a good job making him look like me okay but but I said, look, this is why it has to be Jim, because I hate Hollywood. Hmm. I love Jesus. And I know of only one person in the industry that loves Jesus, for sure. And it's Jim Caviezel. I know that. <laughs> I know that. And so that's why it has to be him. And it turns out these producers also love Jesus. I didn't know for sure, but they have made it very clear. We're very good friends. Now. Yeah. And so that was it. And they called him. He accepted in like four days. Wow. And off he went. And he did a phenomenal job. He yeah. really did. Like he, he says more, if you watch the film, he says more of what I'm feeling at least with his eyes in the film than he does with his mouth. Mm. Like he's, he, he really d is able to like get that message of light against darkness, light exposing darkness um, through just, he's, he's, well, he's spiritual. He, he calls on God. Yeah. Like he says about the passion of the Christ. He's like, I didn't play Jesus. Jesus played me, which he, which he meant. He just gave himself over, like tell me what to do. And he, and that's how he acts, you know? Yeah. And, and I feel like we saw some of that yeah. uh, in, in The Sound of Freedom. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm looking forward to the release of the film. Tim Ballard, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, it. man. Thanks so much. Sin yo tan, yo luto.